A month ago, I released my game platform gun for free on Steam, and it got a bit over 200 downloads. It's a free 30 minute puzzle platformer where you shoot the platforms of both bullets and platforms. Link in the description if you want to play. This video is going to be talking about all the contributing factors to a game launch and less about the game itself. It's a puzzle platformer, the art is not that appealing to a lot of people, and while I do think it's fun, it's not that groundbreaking or revolutionary. But there are a lot of lessons to be learned surrounding the game launch that are absolutely applicable to your future games, and that's what this video is about. My mindset while going in is that I was recovering from two overscoped projects in a row that I had to scrap. I needed a project I knew I could complete, and so I took a single mechanic and decided to make a game entirely around that. This was partially just so I could get some experience with completing a game under my belt, but also partially an incorrect idea I had about marketing games in 2023. I was doing something I had dubbed the 6 month strategy. Back in 2018-2019, I used to play a lot of free games on Steam, and looking back, a lot of these games actually got a decent amount of attention and views. So I thought, if I could just get what is effectively a free taster in front of people, I will get to see if people actually play it, if people like it, what the quit rates are via achievements, and as a bonus, there is a very small chance of it going viral. And from there, I could basically get enough information to let me know whether or not I could do a Kickstarter campaign for a full game. A problem with this is that Steam has changed a lot since 2018-2019. The way you used to find these free games was a lot easier. You used to just be able to filter by price and see what was new. But most of that has been hidden away and has been replaced with an algorithmic curated list of games for you. And so discoverability of your projects is a lot more hidden unless it is boosted by Steam. This is actually proven with data, and it's why you see a lot less trash games on Steam in comparison to before, but it's also a reason why I got less traffic than I had expected. The way Steam works nowadays is that it's basically a soft curated platform which has an algorithm to recommend you what games to play. The algorithm seems to be based on retention, so it's going to look at the games that you play, look at what games other people play, and see if there is some overlapping trends. A big part of this is genre, but it's also Steam promoting games they think will keep people on their platform, and the best proven method is for Steam to promote games that are most likely to sell. This means wishlists, page views, in-game retention, and a bunch of other things we can only speculate on. The way this works means that the 6 month method is unlikely to get attention. If Steam doesn't have enough data on who likes your game, how can they promote it to the right type of people? In addition, why would Steam spend advertising real estate on an unproven product when they can advertise something that is already proven to make money? A rough estimate is that you need 7 to 10k wishlist to get to a point where Steam gets excited about your game and it's likely to increase as time goes on. You need a certain amount of initial attention as your first day downloads to make Steam think that you have a hot product. You really need to prove to Steam that your game is worth it. This is very difficult if your Steam page is only up for 2 weeks, which is what I did. So you probably want to get your Steam page up as soon as you have something presentable, and then try to get as many wishlists as possible over the course of at least a year. And this wasn't helped by another mistake I made. I delayed my art. The first 4 months of developing my game were getting it into a content complete state. The next 2 months were polishing the game and making the art. This is how games like Braid were made, where Brow made a game using programmer art and then hired an artist to make the game look good. This worked back in 2008, but I don't believe this is a viable way to think about game dev nowadays. You want to start advertising your game as soon as it's presentable, and part of getting it presentable is getting the art style sorted with nice looking assets in a feature showcase. As much as hardcore gamers will talk about gameplay being king, they're never going to bother checking your game out unless it either looks really cool, or someone they trust tells them hey, it's actually good. Good looking games can be a selling point, but for a lot of us it's about making it past the first hurdle and not getting immediately rejected for being ugly. If you can get past the first hurdle, you'll actually get people looking at the gameplay and making more of an accurate assessment on whether or not your game is fun. I didn't really market my game outside of some YouTube videos at the very end of finishing Platform Gun. I can't be 100% sure where most of my downloads came from, but I do have a strong feeling that the majority of them are from Steam. 
It feels like the best way to approach marketing is a lot less about directly getting people to play your game and a lot more about making your Steam launch as successful as possible so the Steam algorithm can take over and give you a positive Matthew effect loop. The Matthew effect is an economic idea being based on a bible verse, which in layman terms is the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. I did get some outside media attention as I got featured in a 7 free games on Steam article on the Brazilian website techmundo.com. I got 2k views in 24 hours with very little conversion into people playing the game. Keep in mind, a lot of this could be product related, but even successful games have noticed that many types of articles are not amazing for conversions. I'm still very appreciative of the article regardless. In general, Steam does an exceptionally good job at presenting the games that people want to play in front of them, and it's in a way I don't think any other types of marketing can really compete without going into big budget AAA gaming. The next game I'm making is a healer roguelite. It's still in the programmer art stage as I'm in the process of making foundational mechanics, but once that's done, I'll be focusing on developing an art style and getting something shareable up and running as soon as I can. I'm not entirely sure what that means yet, but I know I need to mark it sooner rather than later. Releasing my first game and reflecting on it has really shown me how important getting a good launch is. It's not just about getting the initial downloads and sales, it's also about getting future wishlists and having it on the back of people's minds until they see a sale. I certainly don't have all the answers, but a guy who seems to be very knowledgeable about this topic is Chris Vuzowski. He's a guy who's taken a data-driven approach to understanding Steam sales and marketing. I've got two talks linked in the description, so check them out. I really cannot recommend it enough. Otherwise, check out Platform Gun for free on Steam, or my Vampire Survivors clone tutorial for Godot 4 if you are thinking about learning the Godot engine.